Hello everyone and welcome to Sci-Fi Zone where we celebrate science fiction movies and TV shows from the past, the present and the future. You can see things are looking a little different here because I've got Claire over there, I've got MPS here and I've got a random dude who's just popped in out of nowhere over here. How good is that? Now if you're in TV land you'll be sitting there thinking who is this guy? Why is he there? Well it actually turns out he is actually the most important person out of this entire show because this is Joe Italiano. Is that how you pronounce it? Italiano? Italiano is correct. Yes. Very good. Italiano, who actually owns and runs Alternate Worlds, the store that we're currently in. So we are actually in a real place. So we figured being the last episode of the season, we'd bring Joe along to have a bit of a natter to work out who he is and more importantly, why is he letting us in here? So <laughs> <laughs> Joe, welcome to the show. So Alternate Worlds, give us a bit of a, uh, a history as to what it's all about. It's all Alternate from. Worlds. Uh, messy history. Um, I started the business in 1977 when I was at college. Wow. It was called Images Images. It was a back issue order trading system designed to fill my uh, addiction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the best way to describe it. Uh, and then it just kept exploding from there. From there we went into uh, doing the original comic conventions, doing the multimedia conventions, uh, doing fanzines, uh, gaming, all sorts of stuff. And eventually despite the fact that I'm a professional graphic artist, uh, which is my interest in comics came in, uh, there wasn't much uh, employment opportunities in that mm -hmm. field because it was the trendy thing at the time and the market was glutted. Uh, we did publish a role-playing game, which was my other interest. Again, that was doing really well until an American company said, hmm, they're kind of killing us. Let's tell people we're suing them for breach of copyright and stop their publication oh, no. from getting distributed. And by the time we found out, we'd missed the boat. So we fell back to number three, which was, uh, we'll have to make the comic business an actual business. So in 88, we opened a store. And that's been going now for 42 years, wow. which makes us the uh, oldest comic-based business in the country and one of the oldest in the world. Wow. So that's the edited history. So <laughs> the fact that you came in 1977, that's obviously when Star Wars came out. Did that have any influence in the decision at all? Oh, Star Wars, but no. <laughs> <laughs> what, never heard of Star Wars? <laughs> I did watch it, no, I did see it. Now, the, the original influence that got me into comics was actually Thunderbirds. Uh -huh. um, when I was in primary school, I used to draw the Thunderbirds in class, because he's an adult, pay attention to class. Um, <laughs> and one of the other students who uh, was cliche named the professor was telling me that I was drawing the ships wrong, which was very frustrating. Uh, anyway. He goes, no, no, I know they're wrong, because I get the comic book and they're drawn right in that. Ah. And I went, comic book? <laughs> um, so I started getting a thing called TV21, which was uh, one of the British weeklies. And from there, it just, well, went downhill, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and he has that edition. No, you don't have that edition still, do you? I don't actually have the TV21 today. It's one of my minor regrets. It's the only mm. uh, comics that I bought and collected that I no longer have. Okay. And how many of those did you have? Do you remember? I had pretty much the run. They uh, went oh, about a hundred and something issues. They okay. combined it with a thing called Countdown, so they had a lot of the British uh, TV shows, you know, Persuaders, G.I. Joe, uh, all that sort of stuff. And they started featuring um, Spider-Man as a storyline in there, which is what got me into the Marvel comics. So from a comics point of view, I mean, obviously things have changed a lot in four decades. So what's the most noticeable thing that you've seen? Well, I suppose the biggest difference is comics are now standard mainstream which is very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, Why frustrating? <laughs> well, I, I'm a non-conformist, ah. and I was always into stuff that nobody else liked, you know. You know, and science fiction used to be, you know, yeah. for the weird geeks. Yeah. And, you know, horror movies, you were a freak if you watched them, and game, all, all that stuff. And now it's like, everybody does. I'm like, oh, that's kind of boring. You know, get your own <laughs> slick. Um, I, think but, I think it's time to create something new, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> something else that no one really thinks about. Mm -hmm. The funniest thing about it is, obviously the movies have made a, a massive impact. Uh, but what people don't realise is, like almost all movies that are adapted from somewhere, you're talking about stories that are 30 years old. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about the new stuff that's happening, you're talking prehistoric old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they're just so far behind, it's kind of funny. Well, the only one that's, that's updated recently would be the new Batwoman series, which is coming out. And she's a fairly new hero as well. She's been around for what? No, a long time. <laughs> no, no, not, no, but the new version of Batwoman, not, not the Kathy Kane from Earth 2 sort of Batwoman, but the new, oh, the new black costume that Ruby Rose is playing. She's been know. around for a little while. Um, 
But I'm saying recent times, like, yeah. like 10 I suppose years. it's a bit more like... recent. It depends what you mean by recent. I mean, yeah. there's so many characters that get recycled and reinvented. Mm. I mean, how many times has Batman and Superman gone yeah. through yeah. changes? Yeah. And, oh, it's a new version. It's like, oh, wow. and, and I remember sitting through a talk that Joe did on Captain Marvel, the female Captain Marvel from, from the Marvel series. And I tell you what, he ha had us sitting there going, so is the Captain Marvel now the, the first Captain Marvel? like, is it? No. And about an hour later, it was like, is it? No. And he eventually got to it. And you know what? It was actually a very interesting story is how Captain Marvel uh, came about being uh, Brie Larson's character mm -hmm. in, in the films now. You know? And if I didn't sit through Joe's lecture, I would never have heard it or never have known. Um, so I have to ask, it's good to see that there's still a bricks and mortar store floating around and you're doing a fantastic job with it. How have you found the whole online revolution? Has that sort of worked for you or hindered your operations? Uh, neither. Really? <laughs> it's, it's more of a case of um, uh, supplementing both. I mean, okay. you need to be into both. Uh, obviously, there are some people that have lower overheads if they're online only, mm -hmm. but then they can't do everything either. So, yeah, it, it's, it's not as horrible as it sounds. I think the biggest problem isn't so much that online exists because as far as competition, we outdo them dramatically with right. our volume and range. It's more a case of customers being lazy. <laughs> um, if they don't want to leave the house, yeah. you're never going to win. Uh, yeah. It's interesting with the online stuff. I only tend to buy things online if I know exactly what I want. But if I'm looking for something, I much prefer to come into a store and have a look around and yeah. if, if you want to see, see a range and experiment, yeah. you're better off in a show. It's, yeah. it's very hard, even if you've got an online store with thousands of items, because everything we have is online as well. Yeah. Uh, you can't browse it. It's, yeah, it's impossible. That's right. mm -hmm. uh, and it's quicker to come in. Mm. Um, but if you have a target, yeah, then online does work. Yeah. I mean, we, the, the, I think the worst thing about online is people that are, how would you say, so narrow-minded that they will go to stores, because I've heard this happening, uh, check things out, get people up into boxes, try things out, get exactly what they want down pat and go, thanks, I'll go buy it online now. Mm. Oh, that's Yeah, yeah that's stuff. a very common thing. Uh, oh. And that is just yeah. so Such a time waster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, when we were setting up our show yesterday, one of the things that I found is that you still have a lot of devoted, regular customers, mm -hmm. which is absolutely fantastic. You still walk into the store. So you must know a lot of people face to face and people have been coming here for decades, practically. Uh, yeah, we've had customers going back from when we opened. Wow. Um, and there are a lot of regular customers. Mm. And do they all have standing orders as such? Oh, most of them will have a standing order of some type. Mm. And then they you know, shop around and buy different things depending on what's around. Yeah. Uh, but it's also a, a social environment. I mean, like anything, you know, you guys like to talk about your TV shows and your movies. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have someone to talk to them about, who do you talk to yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you come into a store that knows what they're talking about. You can interact as well and you get some yeah. feedback. I mean, that's one of the problems you have with a lot of the big departments that stores that don't know the products. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there's nothing worse than going in and say, oh, do you have something that does this? And they go, I don't know, have a look over there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I found about coming to, to comic book shops in general, in Melbourne at least. Most of the people who work in them know their stuff. They've worked in them for so long. You know, that, <laughs> a that, few years. <laughs> Just that, a few. <laughs> that you can you know who they are sort of thing, but yeah. you get some of the newer shops that are com coming up or some of those who change over their staff quite often. Yeah. It's hard to actually know where they sort of sit with certain things. So if you say, can you recommend something? And they go, well, I don't know, there's all the Spider-Man section, for instance. You know, you go, well, no, I don't really want that. You guys know, you can almost tell us uh, where to go and where to start from a lot it, better than... It depends more on the range. Yeah. Um, well, one, of the, one of the reasons we're in a warehouse, for example, because it... I mean, we were the first ones to do it in this country, it's not totally new, uh, is because we want to be a comic shop, uh, which sounds kind of corny until you, you understand what it means. Uh, what a comic shop to me means when I was a kid, not that we had them when I was a kid, is a store where you can go in and get everything, mm. right? Mm. Not a case of, oh, it's new this week, I'll get it, that's it. And a lot of stores just do that. A lot of stores have become like the... Um, the department stores and the bookshops that are trying to get into the market. Mm -hmm. Whatever is the flavour of the month, they'll have for the mm, week. Yeah. And then it's gone. Yeah. If you didn't come in that week, bad luck, you missed mm. out. Can you get it? No, it's, it's all hat. Mm -hmm. um, and to be fair, they can't afford to keep it in stock because it's a slow seller uh, relative to what they had to turn over. But it's not a comic shop. Whereas here, 
uh, we specialise in having a range, in having the old stuff. So if you come in, you've been away for six weeks, we'll probably have all the back issues you need mm. and you can fill your gaps, right? And that's half the fun, <laughs> right? I mean, there's nothing worse than watching a series and then, oh, look, you know that episode 22, that's the second climax finale? Well, you, it's off the air, you yeah. can't see it anymore. It's yep. like, well, what's, what's going on there? Mm. That was some of my favourite things back when I was a kid, going through back orders, uh, back issues, and having a look and seeing, oh, that's a really cool cover, I can't open it, but it's in plastic. So <laughs> I'll put that on the maybe list, and then I'll go through the next one and go, oh, I can't afford that one, but yeah, I'll get it anyway, and you sort of go through that. And that was that was hours and hours spent in, in different stores doing that over, over yeah, the years. It's called tactile. Yeah. 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 If, 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 you, if you want to take your kids shopping, right, I mean, how many parents take their kids shopping, right, and they want to buy clothes, and you're there for two minutes, and they're bored and want to go home, mm. right, you bring them here, and within, you know, well, usually within 15, <laughs> 20 minutes, the mum wants to go home and the kids <laughs> want to go home for hours. And, uh, you know, the kids normally will, yeah. right? Um, but the thing is, uh, the advantage of a store is you've got the product, as you said. Mm. It, you can see it. It's physical. Mm. It's the same with the, um, the online comics, right? It's cute to have something to read, yeah. but it's, in the long run, it's not the same. And you find a lot of people that start online will go to hard copies. Yeah. Yeah. I can't read them online. I, like I can read a, a page or two and they're okay, but I want something in my hand. I want to be able to not fold the pages back. I want to be able to read it really <laughs> awkwardly on an angle so I don't... So you're in split so I, so I try and keep it as pristine as possible. Yeah. And it's, that's part of the fun. And it graphic is. novels are the worst ones because they're so solid in there. Oh. All right, three greatest graphic novels ever written. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's an even bigger field oh, to choose from. God. And if you can't answer that, you, you can't even answer that because it'll be favouritism if you no, don't. Well, so. That doesn't work either. No, no, but for yourself, I'm not saying what the three in the yeah. world are. But, oh. <laughs> give me one then. Give, give me one. Give me one of your top well, ten. Well, Killing Joke was really good. Yeah. Right? Um, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. A lot of this, uh, it's, it's like asking someone what their favourite character is. Uh, I stopped having a favourite character years ago. Because what I found is it's not the character that's good, it's the creative team. Mm. The same with movies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's the writer and the artist who work well, who produce good stuff. Um, Neil Adams, who's a, quite a famous mm -hmm. artist, right, once said there's no such thing as a bad character, just a bad writer. Yeah. Because he was an artist, so he couldn't say bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he was a good artist too, a uh, very yeah, good artist, one of, well, my, favorites. One of uh, my favorites. And, and that's the same with all these movies, you know, all the adaptions and everything else they make. Because the people that do it don't know what they're doing. Mm. Right, all the movies, as I said, they're using stories that are tried and true. They're using stories that were popular, that sold heaps. How can you muck it up? Mm. Well, it's because you've got mm. someone that doesn't know what they're doing and they change mm. things. Mm. Very interesting stuff. So there you go, it's food for thought. We've actually got to wrap this up because Joe's got to go back to work. He's actually got <laughs> stuff to do. How good is that? Um, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell for all the latest updates. Now, as mentioned earlier, this is our last show of the season. How good is that? So there's a few thank yous that we've got to go through first. Uh, obviously, Joe, the man, for letting us in here in the first place. I bet he's going to regret that decision for uh, years to come. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what now? Yeah, okay. exactly right. <laughs> uh, the other people we have to thank are all the crew behind the camera. There's a whole bunch of them back there, thousands and millions of them all sweating away every moment while you're looking at us. They're doing a fantastic job out there. And if you want to learn more about who everybody is, uh, just go to our Sci-Fi Zone uh, website. There's actually a little bit of a bio uh, of, everybody, of everybody involved with the show, so be sure to check that out when you uh, have a moment. Of course, got to thank the presenters up this end of town. Got MPS, we've got uh, Claire, and of course we had H uh, a number of episodes ago uh, along there as well, which is absolutely fantastic. And of course we've got to thank you, the viewers, for sitting through us prattling <laughs> on week after week after week. We hope, one, that you've actually found the show entertaining and two, that you actually learned something uh, from our discussions as well. I know we certainly learned a lot more about Joe than we did uh, previously. Which Maybe is some things we didn't need to know, but... <laughs> That would be exactly right. Well, guess what? In a few days' time, it's going to be December. December is heading towards Christmas. As you know, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is coming out. Very exciting stuff. But if you're going to watch one Christmas movie, there can only be one, and that is, of course, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. And if you're going to watch that, make sure you watch it in the zone. How good is that? All right, we'll leave you to it, and we will see you all next time. <laughs>